Okay, hey, G4T, Survive and Thrive TV. We have a student here from Vegas Middle School, Southern California. And uh, they had an incident today, and she decided to write this down. Apparently, a, a drug-sniffing dog came into your classroom, and it upset you quite a bit. Uh, why don't you read to us what happened? Today in class, I was working on some vocabulary, quietly and peacefully. Then the silence was broken by a shout, telling us to put down our pencils and go against the wall. I was scared, but I masked it so panic would not arise, because panicking is the last thing to do in a situation like this. The teacher who shouted was Mr. Mitchell, and he was accompanied by a woman with blonde hair and, her, and with her a golden brown German shepherd on a leash. How unusual. She then gave it commands to sniff people's backpacks and binders. It obviously was a tr the dog obviously was a trainee um, because it would sniff things and sniff them again. So G for T, I'm definitely going to have a talk with them at the school. I did not sign up for my children to uh, be drug sniffed by dogs and uh, have any type of police training in the, in the classroom. And this was upsetting to my daughter. It's very upsetting to me. And I hope it's upsetting to everyone watching this video. And I don't even know how many classes this is going on throughout the country. But uh, when we start using our public classrooms to train police dogs and to do police training, that to me is unacceptable and unconstitutional. Peace out, g for t We'll give you an update. On the scene at Central Baldwin Middle School is chaotic. Police, fire, and medical personnel are responding to a school shooting. There are multiple victims. That's 10 4 Middle 11 is loading around the South Bowl at this time. And the hostage situation is developing. The middle school is put into lockdown. There was a red map, red map. What you're seeing isn't real. It's a training exercise organized by emergency management officials. That's our number one goal, is to, to save lives, uh, to get in, to, to look at the situation, assess it, and make sure that we get those, those critical people to the hospital as quickly as possible. This school shooting scenario is about as real as it gets. Every major emergency agency in Baldwin County is participating in the drill, and the ultimate goal, to save lives during a real disaster. We certainly believe that we're prepared. We have safety plans, we have procedures in place. And this gives us an active opportunity to uh, see how those procedures work. The training exercise was exhausting, complicated, and detailed. It's extremely difficult. It takes many months of coordination, and it takes a lot of expense. But at the end of the day, we're here to save lives, and uh, you know the expense has never been too great to save a life. Oh, the shotgun on you! 
everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, February 8th, 2012, and I'm Darko. Check out my website, ggnonline.com, and ddarko2012 on YouTube. Monthly terror drills now required by law for students, including kindergarten and first grade. This is from September of last year. Kindergarten and first grade students are now required by law to participate in monthly terror drills, including active shooter, bomb threats, and evacuation drills. And of course, you don't have to do that. You could just homeschool your child. But uh, if you do that, you're going to uh, receive ridicule, uh, you're going to be socially isolated, and you might be a terrorist. So you could be a freeman, a constitutionalist, or a, quote, sovereign citizen, and uh, you could try to play that game of not driving, you know, basically driving without a license and not having insurance and not paying taxes and stuff like that. But it's, it's a nightmare. It's a living nightmare. And, uh, I mean, in the end, you lose a lot of money. You lose your life, and in the end, so I guess you could say true freedom really just buys you uh, poverty. It buys you loneliness is what it does. Uh, but uh, maybe, maybe uh, you know, you've dealt with the same judge for many, many times. I don't know. I'm not giving an excuse for this individual, but gunman with grudge against Middletown mayor shot to death while storming city court. Maybe it was against a judge. Who knows? But he was armed with a shotgun, so... Don't worry about when you're talking about freedom in front of the police who kick people who are going into diabetic shock and then call that resisting. Uh, says here he was armed with a shotgun when he went into uh, this court. Says here he was arrested last summer after he showed up with a machete, a razor, and nailed nutted piece of wood at Mayor Joe Stefano's home in Middletown, threatened Stefano's daughter. It says here in 2000, Malqueen was jailed after failing to make court order uh, repairs on one of his three rental properties in Middletown. Stefano has made a crackdown on code enforcement and rental properties, the centerpiece of his campaign to improve the quality of life in Middletown. Then the New York Times propaganda piece, We the People, or some sheeple, I guess you can call them, lose appeal with people around the world. So, yes, as the Constitution has seen better days, and it goes on, and it says that, uh, basically, says there are lots of possible reasons the United States Constitution is terse and old, and it guarantees relatively few rights. Well, you got to fight for your freedom, I, apparently. So uh, I guess rights are entitlements, and everybody has and rights and entitlements to not be offended or discriminated against or any of the other crap. In a television interview during a visit to Egypt last week, Ju uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg of the Supreme Court, she's a eugenicist, by the way, seemed to agree. I would not look to the United States Constitution if I were drafting a constitution in the year 2012. Of course, they would have to have, what, Planned Parenthood. Um, they would have to have death care. They would have to have, what, unconstitutional wars. Well, that's why the Constitution is so bad, because they've expanded off it uh, so much, including, what, the big Federal Reserve tax, um, and uh, what else? All these wars based off what? Fighting for freedom. Well, it's not freedom. And all those wars were unconstitutional. But some people, you know, like limited government. And, um, you know, it's like me. I'd like to go back to, like, a tribal system or no government. Um, or even if we did have a government, um, to uh, basically a confederation. Kind of like the confederacy that broke away from the Union. They succeeded from the Union. And then they were they, uh, the Union declared war on the succeeding states that's what happened they try to make it seem like it was about uh... like it was about slavery and they actually go in there in this article and i think they even bring that up not mentioning the amount of actual white people that were in bondage uh... also the amount of black people africans that sold their own people into bondage and had their own slaves so we have this from salon top official drone critics are al-qaeda enablers so if you're criti uh, critical of these drones that are appearing everywhere now um, you might be uh, hel helping Al-Qaeda or al qaeda Then we have this from Sky News, growing lone wolf terror threat to the UK. It says here, Britain in the Olympics, i.e. the big false flag terror attack, whether it's going to be asteroids or space aliens or whatever, uh, face a growing threat from the lone wolf terrorists uh, who have taught themselves how to build bombs using uh, the CIA-backed Al-Qaeda publications, a leading security link uh, has warned. And if you think Al Qaeda exists, then you're just stupid. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's <laughs> it's uh, it doesn't exist. You could go out to the, to get the people in other uh, Arab and Central Asian countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, and they'll say there is no Al Qaeda. You know, it's just 
it's just the intelligence agencies uh, giving a bunch of um, thugs who are misinterpreting the Koran, and then they fund them. And so, and but uh, stupid sheeple here in the United States, they buy into that crap. And it goes back to like the Constitution, right? It's like, um, well, if you didn't have unconstitutional wars, and uh, you weren't going around trying to uh, do regime changes, basically that were um, beneficial for the world corporations, then what? Then you wouldn't have so many enemies if you weren't going around meddling in other countries' affairs. I'm not condoning those violent acts. I'm just putting it out there. This is how those people think, some of them. And they're a small minority, mind you. Uh, feds label bulk buying of food uh, a potential terrorist activity. And you could ask yourself, why is Homeland Security stockpiling food? Yeah, that's right. says from the Independence News, says a phone interview said that they're uh, basically stepping up regionalization disaster supplies. They're taking emergency items that are currently centralized in D.C. and distributing them nationally. They've stocked not only food but built underground bunkers. They have a crap load, stored seed uh, varieties to restart agriculture in the event of global catastrophe, and designed secondary systems of government, uh, the shadow government, martial law, i.e., um, continuity of government, where they're just going to basically appoint unelected officials in the event of such uh, economic collapse, results of the banker takeover, nuclear war, or even asteroid collisions. Ah, just like the Olympics. So the FBI put this out to uh, internet cafes, diving shops, and uh, army surplus stores. If you're overly concerned about privacy, um, you might be a terrorist if you pay with cash. Uh, or in a different name or with a credit card, you might be a terrorist. Makes racist or extreme religious statements coupled with comments that are violent or appear to condone violence. Makes suspicious comments regarding anti-U.S. radical theology vague or cryptic warnings that suggest or appear to endorse the use of violence in support of a cause. Now be careful, just like... Um, LCIA's mouthpiece or acid that they drone striked in India or India, um, Yemen, and then his son went over there and then they drone striked and killed him. So you don't have to actually do anything. You just have to appear to be talking about. Then start the National Consortium for the Study of Terrorism and Response uh, to Terrorism. And it goes on here and it says what? That uh, it's urban U.S. counties, hot spots of terror, but rural areas are also not exempt. Smaller, more rural counties such as Maricopa County, Arizona. Extreme right-wing groups that believe that one's personal and or national way of life is under attack or already lost. Extreme left-wing groups. <laughs> How often do you see those? Usually mind control patsies that attack the Pentagon like that one shooter. They just say that they're extreme left wing. In, in fact, the extreme left wing uh, groups are in charge. They're called the communists. So it says here religious, and it says here ethno-nationalist separatists, single issue groups and individuals obsessively focus on one specific uh, cause, such as anti-abortion, i.e. killing babies, uh, anti-nuclear, anti-Castro. Let's not forget this. From the uh, January 4th, 2012, Obama launches Bureau of Counterterrorism. And don't forget, this garbage is coming straight from the elites, you know, like Brzezinski's, the Kissingers, all these guys. These are the, they fund these little outside consortiums, and then that actually dictates policy. So this isn't a democracy. It's a scientific dictatorship. It's a world dictatorship. Terror threats rising as FEMA orders 1 billion in dehydrated food. So even though they're not going to actually have enough resources to help people when they need it, um, what? They don't want you to be able to be prepared because if you are prepared and you stockpile food, you're a terrorist. So it's here January 27th, 2012, New Jersey Assembly Committee to consider ammo ban and more. Then we have uh, Bloomberg reloads and push for gun control in New York City. And he goes on there and justifies it by saying, uh, talking about dead uh, political law enforcement officers that, like I said, do what they do, and then, oh, the children got to do it for the children, right? So it's here, NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, makes it harder to fight terrorism, says the Council Affairs, Council on Foreign Relations. And uh, they say military custody is counterproductive. Yeah, they like to just put a black bag over your head and take you off to a torture, black torture site so that you can, quote, confess. Uh, it says here, political prisoners in a North American home, basically goes in and says that they're going to increase as the nice the noose gets tighter and tighter around. Florida prisons bill would expand private management, netting a big win for political con contributors. 
Then in the U.S., where the prisons are overflowing with nonviolent offenders mostly, the prison industry gains by filling jail. That's right, the profit-driven prison industrial complex, the economics of incarceration, incarceration go check that out. And they're already using uh, prisoners as uh, labor on the farms now, so prison labor. Government may sanction nerve agent use on riders.